Okay, we're just about to start that knife build. Let me show you two that I mentioned in the last video. I said that I was just gluing up. That's two Tuckamores in black with brass pins, natural forge finish. And this one here is that crazy, real nice black, white and tan. They're just, I'm just rough grinding them in right now, but it has a natural forge finish and mosaic pins as well on this one. So this. This one here, this one is a custom order already sold. This one here is available for purchase if someone wants a lucky number 11 there. This thing is going to be gorgeous when it's done. I can't wait to pull that tape off there and see how the natural finish looks. But right now, we're going to get started on that build series that I described in the last video. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check that out up here. I think it'll be, but we have two Tuckamores, I have it drawn out. We have one here and one inch stock, that's the standard Tuckamore template. And the other one I have enlarged ever so slightly on one and a half inch stock. And that is a father-son pair, they're going to be beautiful. And first things we're going to do, it's all one steel by the way, we're going to cut them out here on the porta band. Now it's over to the grinder. Now there are a few things I hate more than grinder dust. It's just the absolute worst. It gets in your skin and you've got to scrub and scrub to get it out because you can feel it. It's kind of like uh, if you've ever put in the old glass insulation in an attic and the particles like stick in your skin. It's there for days. You feel itching when your clothes brush on it at night in the bed. So I gear up, especially if you've got uh, the ceramic belts, real sharp ceramic belts, they don't just carve off dust of steel, they'll carve off all these little shards of steel, actual little metal splinters and uh, well you can imagine they're not very nice. So I gear up, I have an old dirty coat to put on as well. I'm in the midst of getting some coveralls to have out here, but this works well for now. Then you got a respirator, eye and ear protection, and it's not too bad then. I'm not used to doing batches as small as two knives anymore. That just makes things uh, seem so much easier and quicker. When you're working 10, 12, 15 knives at a time, man, every stage feels like so long. It just gets tiring. Stood at the grinder in one spot for four hours, but with only two you can blaze through it really quickly it's nice now looking at the super cool head wrap here I think it deserves a superhero edit So now at this point we have two blades, you can see a bit of difference, probably an inch in overall length, but uh, looking great. Now I'm going to start to rough in the bevels with a 36 grit and we'll come back later and clean up that perimeter grind with a finer grit belt. So once I got working on the belts there, what I decided is to go with a high convex grind. Now this is just the belt finish and that runs, it looks like it runs right up to the spine, but what happens is I run it up until about probably right here, I'm not even sure you can really see it with the light. Run up till about right here and then I just break that hard edge and run into the, the flat surface of the blade there. So these will need to be hand sanded 
from here on in you can see they're looking really great that's a nice finish just like it is there it's probably a little bit close to a satin you'd want to go a little bit higher in grit that's just a 240 grit there so you want to go a little bit higher what I'm going to do now is take it to the next step with this little orbital palm sander here and what I found that does is uh, that just takes down those grinder cut marks really quickly compared to hand sanding and helps me to break right in to these grooves here which can be really hard to hand sand into so I'll start with that go through a couple grits then I'll hand sand these to a nice clean striated finish Oh, look at that new snazzy cap. Thank you to Edge Pro for hooking me up with this nice little beanie. I also have a couple new products. A couple of their Diamond Matrix stones to try out that I'm excited to show you guys as well. I haven't tried them out myself yet, so hit the like button or comment down below if you'd like me to show you guys that. It's a new day here in the shop. Today is a hand sanding day. Hoping to bring those, uh, those two blades, those two giveaway blades we were working on, uh, up to the point of gluing the handles. I don't even know if that's possible to do with the time I have here today, but we're gonna try it out. Let me show you where we are right now. Here's what they look like. I, uh, there we are. You can see I sanded them there with the random orbit sander. Before we get to these hand sanding, I just want to finish hand sanding these two fixed blades. This is a custom order and if you remember this one is still available on Spoken For just because I haven't shown it or advertised it. It'll probably sell really quick once I do. So if you want to get on that shoot me an email. But yeah we're going to hand sand these first. Give them a little buff on my little buffer over there and then we'll get to hand sanding these blades. Then we have the stamp, hole punch, heat treat, temper. Oh yeah we've got a lot of work to do. We better get started. Starting with some 180 grit paper. I think that'll be uh, that'll be a good grit to start with here, and we'll try it out. If I uh, sand for a minute or two, and I see that there's some real deep scratches that we're not getting out, I'll switch over to the 120 grit paper. So that's the courses I'll go. I used to go down to 60 grit. Where I have a whole bunch of 6 secret here that I use for different projects. What I found is they did more damage, more harm than good. You ended up with certain, some scratches so deep that you could almost never get them out. So, the lowest I go now is to uh, 120 grit. And that works real fast as well. So, it's not that much slower. Those two knife handles now are sanded up to 800 grit and they look pretty good. Uh, the nice thing about working with G10 or micarta is basically just a block of resin uh, like fiber impregnated with resin so it's just like layers and layers of subtype of fibrous materials. You can get linen, you can get canvas, you can get uh, Oh, burlap, you can make it yourself with denim jeans, all kinds of stuff. It's just, it's a compressed block with resin. And the nice thing about it is that you can sand it up to, I found around 800 grit and above, and then you can buff it. And what I'll use here is I'll use a white polishing compound, and I'll start off on a hard, this is a spiral sewn wheel, so it's very hard. I use a white compound on that first and then I'll finish finish off with this really doesn't have any compound. I might have a little bit worked into it just from cleaning off from there. But this is just a Canton flannel wheel. So you can see how loose it is and it just really brings a shine on those handles. So you can see here this is the black. So this is some black micarta. Three eight inch stock. And it uh, looks great. We have some solid brass pins sanded up to 80, 800 grit. And it looks pretty good there, although it's almost like a little bit of a, a dusty color. So you just watch now once I give it a little polish here. A little bit of compound.
Now you've really got to be uh, real careful. You don't want to generate too much heat from this. You also got to be careful when you're sanding that you remove all those scratches. Because if you are deciding to put on a polish, if you're leaving a matte finish on there, the, top, the finish doesn't have to be that perfect because you won't notice anything. If you're putting a polish on there, if there's any little mark, divot, scratch, or anything, it will stand out like a sore thumb really, really badly. So you've got to be near perfect if you're planning on polishing your micarta. So this is the 800 grit right here before polish. And then this is with that polishing just as you saw there just no time at all all the time goes into sanding if you've done your sanding well this part doesn't take much time and look at how that brass works in there with the black I love that look this is going to be a beautiful knife now I'll just polish up this knife or this side and uh, we'll be done with this one and that is that knife fully polished now? That's a good looking handle. Feels so good in the hand. Uh, it's got some contouring there, so even though the material's a little bit slick, you've got plenty of material to lock into there. This is a natural forge finish blade. It's going to look a little bit smudgy now with the tape glue. But I'll get that cleaned up. But look at that. It's going to be a Sabre Vex, so I just got to put a little convex on the edge down there buff it out this thing is gonna look fantastic I tell you this might be one that I finally keep for myself this is so so nice I can build you want to have all the materials here if you want one just like this or if you want to inquire about purchasing this one it'd be up in the $200 range of course Love it, love it, love it. Oh, so nice, that polished material. Uh, this is, has those mosaic pins in there. The materials alone for this knife aren't cheap. I'll get a nice black sheath there. Absolutely love finishing a piece like this. So rewarding. So I finished hand sanding and then I quenched them quickly just two blades so like I said things go really quick when it's just two blades I actually forgot to film that part but I never end up getting forged footage anyways because things happen so fast that I just I, I can't run the camera at the same time they're in the tempering oven back there now dad just stopped in to hang out for a little bit I'm gonna clean up the shop while I'm waiting for those to temper and I don't know if I'm gonna get to gluing up the handles or not. I'll probably prep some material now while I'm waiting, but uh, tough to do without having the blades to trace out, so we'll see. And that is about it for today. Ah, can't wait to get the sportsman out. It is a gorgeous day here today. Up like plus maybe it's plus six is saying in the shop here. Outside in the sun for sure it's more than that, but uh, just beautiful. Super nice for a change. Get a break from that cold and start to see winter going away. The snow's melting, so yeah, I can't wait to get the bike out. Hopefully we'll get some videos tearing around a little bit of mud and slush and snow as everything starts breaking up here. I'm done in the shop here for today. We didn't get them glued up as I was hoping, but we got them sanded, drilled, stamped, completely heat treated, so it'll be hand sanding next day. I just I got out here later today and I was hoping. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna go enjoy the day. Meeting up with old Cody here now. Just look at that lovely sun. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button. Tune back in for some more of this uh, this series later on. We'll see you in the next one.